Hi, my name is Katarina Silva and I am a researcher at Nature Research Center. In this presentation, I'm going to show some of the work we have been developing in this project on open source tools for machine learning based image collection, annotation and classification. We know that more than 80% of global catches occur in fisheries that lack essential data for stock assessments to be performed. And recreational fisheries continue to grow in popularity and have important well-being and economic benefits, but can threaten fish stocks and the environment, although its impact often remains unknown because it's still considered to be data poor. But there is potential for large-scale data collection and strong motivation amongst anglers to conserve fish stocks. One way to achieve this is through active community participation and citizen science. So large quantities of images and data have been collected by citizen scientists who not only help generating large data sets, but also promote awareness. This data can now be collected even more easily via mobile technologies. It is urgently due that recreational fisheries management benefits from the increasing popularity in mobile fishing applications to achieve a step change in data collection. Artificial intelligence or AI offers a great opportunity to transform recreational fisheries management um, because it allows automation of tasks such as species identification and fish measurement. However, integration of AI into fisheries management has been very limited. There is a small number of publications related to AI in fisheries and these studies have been mainly applied to commercial fisheries. So tools are usually not openly shared to the community um, and application is limited. So given this, we developed a framework using open source tools, hoping to guide research in this area. Our framework is divided in three main models and six steps. The first model, data management, consists of two steps. One for data storage, where remote servers and providers such as Google Cloud Platform or Amazon Web Services can be used. And the second step, uh, the pre-processing, is the sensitive data filtering. So in many cases, images may contain sensitive data such as people's faces, um, such as these images. And depending on the nature of subsequent work, it may be preferable to remove such data. This step in the framework uses computer vision library uh, for Python and a pre-trained model to detect human faces. And then um, places a bonding box and overlay with a color, such as in these examples here, to hide the sensitive data. So model two on image processing has three steps. Um, step three here, the pre-annotations. We use a pre-trained model to detect the fish in the image, but it can be used to detect other 600 different objects. This step accelerates the, the process of manual annotation because the photos may include, for example, accidental images. So this step will reduce the amount of work that is required to sort out images manually. Um, so here in the step four, the manual annotation of images. We use the open source software VIA, uh, but there is a variety of open source tools for this task. And step five, data augmentation, involves creating multiple copies of the same images, but with transformations, uh, such as, for example, flipping the images, such as in this image, in this example here. This is done because image augmentation um, has been shown to be a method effective in preventing overfitting, improved performance and um, model convergence. And the last model of the framework uh, is the machine learning and uh, model training and testing. This framework uses TensorFlow Lite uh, model maker library and the uh, transfer learning techniques, which reduces the amount of training data required and also the model training time. And TensorFlow Lite supports several model architectures, which are pre-trained models for image classification and object detection. But the library is very flexible and new models can be added by customizing the library code. We have tested our framework for automatically identifying common fish species in images, <clears throat> images that were uploaded to this Fish Deeper app, who kindly provided us with the data. And we have selected six common species uh, and annotated these images, this number of images per species. So after data augmentation, we used over 4,800 images to train and test a model. And we've tested different model architectures and combination of parameters. And here is a confusion matrix for the best model we've trained with um, 
overall accuracy of 91%. This is showing the normalized uh, relative values of correct predictions for each species. So what we are interested in here are the values in diagonal. As you can see, it looks promising for some species with all labels correctly predicted, uh, the number one here in the diagonal, but the model is not performing so well for other species and needs improvement. And this case study is a good example that it is possible for a small research group with few resources to apply a machine learning framework to a small number of classes um, with relatively small number of images per class. Manual annotation of images, the step four was identified as an important challenge where expect knowledge was crucial for correctly identifying fish species and a pos possible improvement to this step as we add more species to the model is to apply the train model, so from step six to the new images that we need to uh, include and then manually processing only those images that had low classification score. Um, and make this process interactive. So you can read more about this framework uh, in our manuscript, available as a preprint and currently in review, and also find the framework in our GitHub page, the Fish Size Project. Uh, so I'd like to acknowledge the Fish Deeper for providing the data, and Lina and Augustus for helping with manual annotations, and these institutions for funding and support. And thank you.